Okay, uh, we've got 20 liters of juice in here now. We've got the 10 cans of the um, Welch's 100% grape juice. Now, it's not wasn't a grape drink, it was a grape juice. Make sure you get the right one. Uh, we've added the four gallons of water, which brought it up to 20 liters exactly. I just tested it with a hydrometer. Uh, my hydrometer was 1.050. I also used the refractometer, which was 1.050. Now, at 1.050, our potential alcohol at that point, oh, let me go over on the scale and read so I get it right for you. Our potential alcohol is about oh, somewhere around 7. So we have a potential right now of 7% alcohol by volume just from the juice cans and water. We haven't added anything else. So uh, this is good. It, it, this could turn out to be a pretty hearty uh, wine. Um, it's going to be a really good taste in wine. Well, we, I want to try to get to. I want to try to get to about a nine, maybe, or or a little bit more. So what I'm going to do. Remember, we said that uh, before on one of the videos we were talking about gravity points. Uh, a one pound will raise one gallon, 32 gravity points. So we're going to find out. I'm going to add two pounds of sugar and find out. What I'm shooting for is I'm going to try to see if I can get up to about 1.0, maybe 7.0, and shoot for about an 8-9% uh, alcohol by volume in a wine. So let's add that. Now you notice I've still got my paddle left in here. I'll, I leave that in until I'm actually done with it because, because taking it out, cleaning it, and sticking it back in is just a pain in the butt. Um, so here we go. Let's add two pounds of sugar, and this is really easily done because I'm using corn sugar, and corn sugar will go in and will liquefy almost immediately. But of course I'll leave nothing to chance. I've got my whip. We'll whip that. We'll whip it real good. Uh, once I get that whipped so it mixes real good, I'll, I'm gonna remove that. I don't need that anymore. But see, I still got my paddle. Um, Again, be careful not to scratch the inside of your fast ferment. That's where little bugs and things can start to grow, and you don't want that to happen. All right, I am, as far as I'm concerned, I am done with this, so uh, I can remove the paddle. All right, we're going to use our refractometer. There it is. And we're going to need to test... We're going to test that wine to find out what is the gravity now and what can we potentially expect. There's one, two, uh, about three drops is all it takes. Close the shutter and give it a look. By gosh, 1.065, which is something I'm extremely happy with. 1.065. We've raised that. 15 gravity points by just adding two pounds of sugar to it that quick and if we look at our hydrometer and we look for now we can do the long math or we just use our hydrometer it's there for us 1.065 if we rotate that over and we look for a percent of alcohol that's going to bring us to almost nine percent so we're right above eight we're below nine so eight and a half percent alcohol almost closer to nine uh, almost 9% alcohol. I, I'd be happy with that. So I'm going to let that set there. Now, what I'm, the next step, what we're going to do is we'll move somewhere else, and I'll take a, a sample of this. We're going to go through the acidity, uh, the pH, and, and all that before we add our yeast and allow this to go move on. Because I've still got the frozen, you know, the ice bottle to place in here so that we can maintain temperature. I've still got to put the ball on the bottom. Still got to open that up, you know. We got a few more things to do, so we're not done. Oh yet. yeah, we're back. Hang with us. You know, we are so close to being finished now, um, and so I wanted to show you all of this, and, and and then that way we'll have an opportunity, or you'll be prepared to test your wine from start to finish. Now there is a lot more science behind wine making than we could possibly fit in several videos, but uh, this is probably the most important, just the basics of getting it right um, and allowing you to have certain data points to know where you're at and what you can expect on the on the end. Okay, uh, oh yeah, this is still in the way. I, I keep putting this out just as a demonstration because I keep saying 
you know, if you may or may not be involved in the distilling industry somewhere around your neighborhood, uh, it doesn't turn to vinegar. This is, uh, this is like a month old. Um, it's, been, it's been finished for at least a month and it just sits here. It just, that's all it does. It's, you know, it's its own preservative. So I'm gonna put that on aside. We did a whole video on that. So, uh, you know, go back and check it out. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, we've got to find an acetobacter bacteria in order to put in there, in order for that to turn to a vinegar. And it, then it's going to take like six weeks for that to happen. So please, folks, don't worry. If you got one and you finished it, put it aside and leave it at room temperature. It'll, it'll be fine. It, you'll get to it. Okay. Look at this. Remember, we did, we did this as well. Uh, this is for our pH meter. I've got the wine that I took out and I used a little uh, stopper on the side of the uh, fast ferment that we you remember we drilled a hole in we put that stopper on the outside it's a um, oh, it'll come to me in a minute it's a spout uh, so we can pull wine off and test it. It's, a, it's great to use it for that so I got two small glasses filled up so that's the wine that we're going to test but remember we, we made this up and this is something else that will last forever I mean uh, it comes with the uh, with your pH meter, and we've got pH 1.8, uh, uh, 4.0, and 8.6, uh, and what this is is a mixture of distilled water and the chemicals that, that comes with your meter, and I just made the three jars, and every time I need to recalibrate my uh, pH meter, I just open the jar and Stick it in there and read it and, and just make sure that this reading and this reading are the same because we know what this is. We just want this to read that. And then I'll go to the next jar and then go to the next jar just to make sure that it's all rounded out. And, and so this pH meter is working. So let me set that aside. The way this pH meter works, uh, it's real simple. It's just take the cover off and turn it on. And I've got a digital readout. Now, in a red wine, our, our goal our goal is to have a pH of anywhere from 3.2 to like 3.65, somewhere in that neighborhood. It, it, so that's, remember that in, in that pH scale as well, it goes from 1 to 14, and 7 is absolutely neutral. So we're going to go into, I'm going to stick this in here, and my pH level is, I'm waiting on it, it's, there it is, okay, I'm at 3.5. So I'm well within the range, anywhere from 3.2, 3.65, um, oh, 3.4, okay, good. I'm, I'm well within the range. I'm right there in the middle, so I'm happy with that. So we do know what the pH is. Oops, I'm, let me go clean this off. I'll be right back. Yeah, just make sure you keep this thing clean. I just went out and rinsed it off. Uh, and make sure you just use distilled water. You can dip it in and, and swish it. Uh, as a matter of fact, distilled water should read 7. Neutral. Uh, I'm going to put this on the screen for you so you can see this as well. But this is a, a copy of, oops, of the scale for pH. It starts at 0 and works its way to 14. And 17 right here, or I'm sorry, 7 being neutral. And this is pure water or blood. Uh, and and, you, and you, so you'll notice here that, you know, the lower the number goes, the more acidic it is. And then the higher the number goes, it's the more alkaline or, or basic it is. And some comparisons are like battery acid is zero, very, very acidic. Uh, you'll look here, you've got vinegar and uh, like lemon juice is at a two. Now our wine is going to wind up here, anywhere here from a three to a uh, uh, for four, somewhere in that neighborhood. So this is, uh, looks like in <laughs> grapefruit and orange juice. Uh, then it goes up to tomato juice and beer. And then acid rain, 7-Up soda. So it's, it's got a lot of things on here that will tell you. And you can see that on the screen. You can see what, what different items are on the pH scale. So, so now we've measured the pH. We've, uh, we've also uh, got the uh, specific gravity, 1.065. So we know that we're going to have about a 9% uh, a by alcohol, uh, alcohol by volume wine. Uh, if all goes well. Now, here's what we got to do next. The, the next thing we got to do is we got to get, uh, we're going to use sodium hydroxide. Now, folks, this, and as I start to describe these, please be very, very careful. This is a very, very caustic uh, substance. Um, 
Uh, it is very, very dangerous. Keep it out of reach of children. Uh, don't do anything else with it other than what you see going on here, okay? So please, please be very, very careful. This is very caustic. Um, and then we've got the uh, phenol, phenolphthalene. Uh, it's, it, it's another chemical. Be very, very careful with it. It's, uh, it, it's also very dangerous. But we're going to use this to test the acid level the acidity in specific of the wine. Now you can test white wines or you can test red wines. Uh, it's all about a color change that takes place. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take 15 cc's or 15 ml's. Uh, it, both those scales are the same. Uh, there's 10. There we go. And we're going to put it into our test beaker. There's 10. Now let me get five more. Because you need to start with 15, and the uh, the whole the uh, whole issue is uh, is that we're it's all based by measures. There we go. So we've got that, and I'll set that aside. Because now we're just going to be working with this much. What I need next is I need to be able to clean this thing off, and I haven't. Can you bear with me a second so I can go clean this? <laughs> there we go. Just a real quick spurt now. Uh, so the phenolphthalein, what we need is we need three drops of this. So I'll carefully just get my eyedropper and go one, two, three. All right, so we put three drops of that in. What we're doing is we're setting, we're setting the acid level. And it actually sets the acid level high. Uh, and what the intent is, is, see, now that we kind of know where that's at, what we're trying to do is we're going to neutralize it, and then we're going to use a mathematical formula to figure out what the acid level is of the wine itself. Now, we already know what the pH level is, so we know if it's more acidic than it is alkaline. And right now, we know that it's in the acidic range, but we don't want to know now how much of it's in the acidic range. Now remember, the three acids in the wines, and again, this is another long topic, is malic acid, uh, citric acid, and tartaric acid, okay? So the tartaric acid gives it that tartness. Uh, then your, your citric acid and your malic acid uh, act in combination to do a couple of other things. And part of it, it has to do with clarifying. The other part of it has to do with uh, a catalyst and assistance for fermentation and stabilization and clearing. Um, it, what we don't want to have is we don't want to have too much tartaric acid because then we have that. You notice how some of your wines have those little crystals that fall at the bottom? It's normal. It's, it's called a tartrate fallout. Uh, and it's natural. It happens. There, there's a couple of things you can do, but for home, for winemakers, the, the best thing to do is to kind of cold crash it, let it chill, and once all those fall out, is bottle it from there, siphon it off and bottle it. But we'll get to that in another topic. All right, so here we are. We've got 15 cc's, 15 milliliters or cc's <coughs> of, uh, of our wine, and that's our wine must. And this is before we add any yeast to it at all. We're not, we haven't done anything but mix it. We already know what the gravity is, 1.065, and we already know what the pH is, which is 3.4. Uh, we've got, so 15 cc's, we've got three drops of phenolphthalein, and now we're going to take the sodium hydroxide. Now, this is the real dangerous stuff, the most dangerous stuff that you're going to use here. And we're going to suck up 10 cc's. And the reason we're going to take up 10 is because we're going to introduce this one cc at a time. Now, what you do is one cc at a time, we will add this back into the wine, and now red wine will turn gray, uh, a white wine will turn a purplish pink, uh, and then when you shake it, it'll disappear. And you continue to add one cc at a time until the color remains permanent. Now, what I mean by that is this is a, a red wine, so we're, we're working with gray. Uh, it's easier to describe if it's a white wine. If this is a white wine sitting in another glass next to it, when I add the first cc, you'll notice it'll turn pink. 
and then I'll shake it, it'll disappear. I'll add another CC, it'll turn pink, I'll shake it, it'll disappear. So, something sort of like that starch test we do. At some point, I'm going to add a CC and shake it, and it won't change. It'll stay pink. We know that we've just neutralized all the acid. That's how it works. And the same thing with this red. So let's get working on it. Okay, let's do our first CC. There it is. We shake it, and any of that gray has gone away. Another CC. And I'll shake it, and that's gone away. Looks like she's getting close, though. One more CC. We're down to seven, or we've added three. And that's, yo, yep, that's gone away. Okay, one more. And I'm doing this just by the scale that's on the side of this syringe. And this time I'll shake it. And you'll notice that, and it's really hard to discern here, as I know on the video, but you can, you can see that the dark, it's, it's remained a dark gray. So that's a dark gray color. And what we did was we put four cc's into that. So the four cc's means that my acidity level, I could probably go with one more. That's just very, very slight. Let's do one more. Oh yeah, most definite. Okay, with the five cc's, that means it's 50%. So four cc's would have been 40%. Now there's a, there's a general rule um, for these wines, and ah, oh, that's good. Uh, a fruit wine is 40 to 60%, 70% uh, uh, is for a really stout, let me look here, I've got a list of, yep, yeah, sherries are 50%, uh, white grape wines are about 70 to 75, reds, uh, fruit wines are 60, 50, 60, um, and then red grapes uh, would be about 70%. So that gives us a really, really good indicator. Now, while we're here, let's do a white wine so we can give you another example. Of, this is the red that we've already done. So we'll do a white wine real quick. Let me close this up because of the dangers of that stuff. And I'll clean this off, and we'll get this thing set right back up. We'll do it again. Hehe. <laughs> Hehe. <laughs> All right, I was smart enough this time to bring back a little bit of water that I could use to rinse things out and I don't have to jump out all the time. Okay, okay, this is our white wine. Now you can test the wine after it's already fermented as well. It'll, give you, it'll tell you what the acidity is of, it, of it is. It will tell you, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. All right, remember we started off with 15 milliliters, mLs or cc's. There's 10 of them. And we get five more. There we go. Five more. All right, set that aside. Get to clean that out. Now, remember we used three drops of phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein. That's not an easy one to pronounce. All right, we only need three drops. Here we go. One, two, and three. You know, at the rate that I use this stuff, it's going to last quite a while. I've, I've had folks ask me, well, how, you know, it's, it, it is shelf stable, so I'd use it, you know, within a year or so, but uh, it, it's going to last you quite a while because you're only using very little. What you use the most of is your sodium hydroxide. And again, please be very, very careful. All right, now we're going to take 10 cc's of this stuff. Because we want to know, we may not use it all, and if we don't, we'll just put it back. There we go. So we got 10 cc's of it. Very caustic, very dangerous. Oh, all right. I keep saying that. All right, let's do the first. Now remember, we're, gonna, we're looking for a color change. 
Here goes the first CC. If I know you can see that, you, it, it, can it turns a little purple, pink, then we shake it and that dissipates. All right, that's one. Let's do that again. There's the next one. You'll see how it turns the color. So it turned purple again. That was two. You shake it, it dissipates, and it turns back into a clear liquid. Let me see if I can do this real close. Uh, let's do three. The third one. Yeah, you can see it changing. And then we shake it. So, uh huh. Okay, yep, it disappears. There goes the fourth one. That disappears. There goes the fifth one. Uh oh. You notice that it has stayed. It's permanent. It's a permanent color now. It's not, it won't change. Okay. Although it's just starting too slightly. Oh, we can get a little bit more. Oh, we get a bit more precise. Fifth one. So it's the sixth one. There we go. So that means that this one is 60% acidic. Isn't that just neat? <laughs> um, no longer will you have those questions. Um, and then when you can talk to other folks and you're talking about the acidity of wine and uh, you'll sound smart and you'll know, you will be, you'll know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, if you have issues with your wines, uh, here's the question. Is it the acidity of the wine? Uh, it, are, are the challenges you're having the pH level of the wine? Is it too high? Is it too low? Um, Excuse me. Um, what about the gravity? So we take all three of those data points and put them together, and that tells us now that in this particular case, my anticipation at the very end is I'm going to have a really nice, and I'm going to stop now. I might back sweeten a little bit, make this a really nice sweet wine, about a nine percent. Uh, it's not going to be real tartic or tart, so it doesn't have a whole lot of tartric acid in it. Uh, it's got a pretty good balance of malic and uh, citric acid. Uh, therefore, you can, if necessary to change this, we have an acid blend. And the acid blend is developed, it's a, it's, it's a combination of those three acids uh, in combination in the most normally used proportions, uh, which is higher mal uh, tartric, a little bit less malic, and in uh, the citric. And you could start to introduce that in order to adjust that, either the pH level or you could also adjust the acidic level uh, in your wines. So. That's just so much fun. Now let's get back over to the uh, fast ferment. The last thing we've got to do now is we've got to add our yeast and uh, we're going to move on. This time we've selected a different yeast instead of the EC1118. I got to show you this. Woo we're about our last step. Now I told you that we're going to use the uh, 71B uh, 1122. Um, and this is really in the same family of the EC1118, which is a really, really good robust yeast. But this one in particular has been cultured for red grapes and long-term concentrates. It has an alcohol tolerant level of like 12 to 14 percent. I'm going to get nowhere near that, but, but this is going to be very, very uh, healthy and really good for it. So I'm just going to open this up and contrary to popular belief, you know, some folks love to make a yeast starter look. That works well. Your technique is totally up to you. This, all I can show you, this is how George does it. This is George's way. Um, it works for me every time, um, and if I ever have a challenge, one day maybe I'll go to doing you know, a yeast starter and sticking it in there, but un until then, I'm just going to sprinkle my yeast. What I didn't need, because of the concentrate, I didn't need any, um, in this particular case, um, all the protein and the carbohydrates that are in here, I, I really didn't need any nutrients. So I'm skipping them this time. And all I'm doing is I'm going to add, introduce the yeast. So this is going to be a really interesting test for us to see how that works out. Uh, of course, you know, I'm a Star Sand fanatic. I got the spray ball. I, I, I just spray everything. Spray, of course, give it a shake. And then I've got a couple of yeast laying up there. And then 
attach. Uh, but look, when you get your fast firm in, and I'll say this as many times as I absolutely have to, is please screw the top on and off 10 times just to make sure it seats the threads so that it doesn't leak because if it leaks, your airlock is not going to have any activity and you're going to be concerned. Uh, if that happens, please check the gravity to make sure that you have something going on first and that'll indicate whether you've got a leak or not. Okay, and last but not least, I've got one bottle in there. I want to show you how I did this. Uh, these things are super neat because you know, they, it comes with these little small connectors and with the, we call 550 cord. Uh, a nice cord, so I tied it around the top of that frozen bottle, and I just got one of these binder clips, and this is just a regular binder clip you'd find in an office supply store, and just click out one end of it. These things, believe it or not, these you could use these for a lot of different things. Uh, just put that through the hook, lay it in there, and now what you've got is you've got a bottle hooked to a binder clip, and I'm going to use that binder clip and clip it to my rail and that's going to hang that frozen bottle right here as long as I can get my fingers around that come on there we go so so you'll see I've got two bottles hanging there the only thing I've got left to do of course is to zipper it up I've got the thermometer on so I'll check the temperature later There we go. Now, I'm going to open up. Ah, let's open up this one because it looks like it's going to be closer to it. I'll open up this hole. That around to my. There we go. I've got my airlock in. Make sure that my bag stays, there it goes, stays secure to my Velcro. And then zipper her up. And that is, my friends, one fast ferment complete with the 100% grape juice that we're going to turn into our grape wine. And I don't have to do anything to that. And no, I no longer have to set my AC down to about 70 when I leave at night to make sure that the whole store stays at temperature. Uh, I just turn it off. I'm just going to take advantage of this thing now. What do you think? Hey, please get in touch with us. Send us a, a, a message. Give us a call. Uh, you, you got our phone number. Uh, share us with your friends. Like us on Facebook. Do all those great and wonderful things. Uh, we love nothing more than to serve our community, and we're here to answer your questions as best we possibly can. Please be patient with us. We are patient with everybody. We love what we do and we enjoy this. Please be safe and as always, happy brewing.